Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back with another video in our Woodsman's Gear of the 20th Century series. Another cold, rainy day here in Ohio, so I'm going to take you down to the classroom. We're going to talk about what I figure is the first takedown style bow saw that was made for the outdoor market. Now, remember that they had takedown buck saws that were made in large pieces that were sold even in the Sears and Roebuck catalog in the early 1900s, but none of those were really designed for the sportsman to take into the woods. In the 1950s, C.F. Peters patented a takedown style buck saw that was meant for sportsmen to take to the woods to camp to buck up firewood. We're going to talk about that saw today. Stay with me. Hey, I'm living good. Back in the woods. Okay, so let's talk about folding buck saws for a minute. There's lots of folding buck saws on the market today. The Bob Dustrude and the Boyle 21 both being very popular today. And there's lots of takedown buck saws made out of wooden frames. Uh, Adventure Sworn has one. My buddy Nick Stoll has a really nice one that we saw on our website. And there are other metal frame buck saws folding or takedown that have been made throughout the 20th century. But I believe that this one patented in the early 1950s, May of 1952, to be accurate, is probably the first one that I've seen that was a designated folding buck saw designed for the camper or the outdoorsman. So it came in a tube that was made from cardboard with a metal cap, and this is the actual original packaging that I have with this saw. This is one out of my collection. And so it came out in one piece just like this, and we're going to kind of unfold this, fold it up and talk about it here and demonstrate it as well here in just a second. So let's get started. Okay, so let's look at a couple things on this saw. Obviously you have a metal framed saw here that folds on itself and it has a pin through the middle that's designed to actually go through the teeth to prevent the blade from coming out. And so you would have to push that pin aside to allow the blade and everything else to slide out. Okay, so once you pulled your blade out, and you can see this is a fairly wide pruning style blade with rakers and gullets, but it's a wider blade than what you see on saws today. And it has a tab on this end to catch in the frame and a wing nut and washer on a bolt on a piece of all thread here for the other side of the frame. So it's a very typical design of what you would see today. And I'm sure that most of the folding saws of today are copied off of a similar design to this. And that's why it's so important for us to understand the history of where this stuff came from because this guy created this saw back in the 1950s and it folds out here and folds down here on a steel frame. And this is steel, not aluminum, so it's a heavy saw. It probably weighs two and a half, three pounds all said and done. One end has a hole and the other end just has a slot. So you would drop your slotted end would capture the stop on the blade here, just like this. And the other end, you would simply take off the wing nut and the washer, just like this. And you would actually push that through this hole, just like this, and it would stop. So you had adjustment there where you could pull that through. And once you had this front side hooked in, you could push this in to adjust it over to get that hole to line up to come through just like that. And then you could, at that point, get your washer and your nut on there to start tightening this thing up. And it's a pretty tight fit. You can barely grab those threads. But once you get a hold of them, there's actually a slot in here beside the hole so you can actually pull the blade into the slot. You just have to line it up as you do it but it almost is tight enough that it doesn't go into the slot. And you have to be cognizant when you're lining this thing up to pull it into that slot. But once you get that done, then you can get all the tension on this you want. 
you know, it's a very, very stable design and a very stable saw. So you just crank that wing nut down to get the desired tension. Then you have a full on buck saw. We'll test this thing out on some lumber, show you how she works. Was a piece of hardwood maple, probably three and a half inches in diameter, something like that. Not completely dried out, but fairly dry. So you're cutting dry wood instead of green wood with a green wood blade. However, for a 70 year old saw, I'd say that thing does just fine. Now, once you were done at camp and you wanted to put this thing back away, you know, it's just the reverse. It was pretty quick and simple. You just loosen the wing nut to remove the tension. And you have to take everything off because you have to pull it clear out of the hole, just like that. And then you would replace these two so you didn't lose them. The blade would drop out, the whole frame folded up, and then you just slid the blade into the center of the box frame, just like that. And once you got it in there, you would come down to this end and you would adjust things to where you could get a tooth caught with that pin so that the blade wouldn't come out. Slide it back into the tube and throw it back in the canoe or whatever your conveyance was unless you decide you're going to carry this thing in a backpack. But it's a very innovative design for its time. It's probably one of the first of its kind that was designed for the sporting market. And I think it's important for us to understand the history of things like the folding buck saw in videos like this. Okay, folks, well, I appreciate you joining me today for another quick video in our woodsman's gear of the 20th century. This is the C.F. Peters Forester folding saw. Patent date on this was May of 1952. So I believe that this is the first folding saw designed for sportsmen on the market. So it's kind of an obscure piece of gear. I've never seen one like it other than one in my collection. And I wanted to show it to you today and introduce it to you in this series. I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you for your views. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. All our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back to another video in this series as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.